A very warm welcome this evening. My name is David Patterson, and it's been my privilege, and I didn't mean that, it's been a real privilege to curate the exhibition, which you see, I uh, hope you have seen, downstairs, and uh, hope will one day as well. Tonight we're going to take a look at the themes running through the superb exhibition downstairs. Themes underlying the history of the Highlands of Scotland and the world's response to them. Maritime history and seafaring. Highland clearances and hardship. The loss of Gaelic. Exploration and immigration. Tonight we've invited three of Scotland's renowned traditional musicians to present a reflection of these themes through music, story, song and verse. Hopefully, you will get a flavour of these artworks whose writer and art critic Duncan McMillan has said of Will he is one of the outstanding artists of his generation. So tonight on Small Pipes, Whistles, Trump and Gaelic Song is Alan MacDonald, one of the three legendary piping brothers from the Benuig, a master of his craft, deeply rooted in the Gaelic tradition and widely acknowledged for his superb compositions for his tuition, research and determination to keep the Gaelic traditions alive. On fiddle is John Martin, who has performed worldwide with such influential and traditional bands as Ossian, the Easy Club, Contraband and the Tannehill Weavers. On mandolin and sitter is Kevin MacLeod, a relation of Wills, who shares a common heritage from Paul Bain. Kevin is a member of the acclaimed Scottish Kelly band, The Occasionals. So, without further ado, I'm going to hand over Kevin to John and Alan. Thank you very much, David. The extraordinary story of St Kilda has long held a fascination for Will MacLean. The harsh conditions accepted by the society there over many centuries, the reliance on the seabirds for sustenance and the extreme isolation has informed the artist's work for much of his career. Three memorable pieces in the exhibition below, Atlantic Messengers, echo the creation and the reliance on the St Kilda mill boats, simple boat-shaped carvings with attached bladder floats, Gallic messages in a bottle. These were launched into the Atlantic Ocean to send messages, letters or requests for help to the Western Isles and beyond. McLean has cast resin eggs into the artworks containing items that commemorate aspects of life on the very edge. A bird's skull and an oil sack recalls the former. Another remembers an anchorite nun who, it was believed, sought white martyrdom and whose skeleton was found with a bird nesting in her breastbone. Wonderful complex imagery and visual storytelling. The acclaimed Scottish folk band, Ossian, of which our fiddler here, John Martin, was an integral part, recorded this lovely melody we're going to play you now on their 1978 album, The St Kilda Wedding, first of several hugely influential albums that the band subsequently made. I learned the tune from the record, and decades later I actually took my mandolin onto the, the stunning archipelago at St Kilda, and I played this tune on the unforgettable main street of the World Territory site. So, we're going to play this and put away from it.
Paul Bain, stonemason, lobster fisherman and bard, was born in 1855 and brought up in Paul Bain, one of the small townships on the Coyach Peninsula on the northern shores of Loch Broom. His brother Murgle, Murrachlather, was a mason and house builder who constructed the house Springwell in which Will MacLean's grandmother Mary MacLeod was born, along with her youngest brother Hector, my grandfather. The bard wrote verse that reflected different aspects of the lives of the Gaelic people in his close-knit community. And these were learned, recited and sung at gatherings in a local Kelly house. On Batwanya, the green boat was a favourite and often sung, and it even entered into the travelling community's repertoire. Sometime in the 1950s, Will McLean had the foresight to record some of his elders in Pope Bain, including his father, Captain John McLean, and in particular Johnny Alley and Abigail McKenzie, singing some of the repertoire. Abigail's apron is one of the key works in the exhibition which reflects and remembers the Club of Highland Folk. According to the artist recently, when the, Her Majesty the Queen once viewed the intricate work, she rightly commented, hmm, that's interesting, but it would take a lot of dusting. <laughs> which caused Will to be surprised that she seemed to like it and knew what dusting was. <laughs> in 2005, um, my father, Ronnie McLeod, compiled all the known material by Neil McLeod, the Paul Bain Bard, into a comprehensive account of his work before it was lost. Ronnie was one of the last native Koyak Gaelic speakers, and his, this work would not now be possible. So it's a poignant reminder of another of the artist's deep-rooted themes, the loss of language. But this fine song reflects the deep-rooted maritime influences on the artist from his seafaring father, Captain John McLean, and his Will's maternal family in Skye, the Reeds of Kyle who were renowned ringnet fisherfolk. Roddy McLeod says, and Batawanya shows the huge part the sea played in the locals' lives, the sheer admiration for a fine boat, the rivalry existing between the crews, and the very unparochial interest in such nautical matters as the America's Cup races and yachts. Many local men would have crewed these huge boats. I remember local men coming home waving blue gansies with the names of the famous yachts and blazing on the fronts. Here too, Neil McLeod reveals a particular tradition skill which poets of old had in describing a boat, which he could only have acquired by reading some classical Gallic poetry. It finishes with the whimsical idea of the exuberant celebrations that would follow should Ali Ban McLean come home in his car. So Alan is going to sing uh, an abridged version of Abad Awani. It's quite long because Kayleigh's in the Highlands in the winter will be long. Uh, so we, we, we have the English translation for you on the seat, should you wish to follow it, given that uh, it will be something else. So go to you, Alan. Thank you. 